the purpose of this clinical trial for soft tissue sarcoma is to inject an important immune hormone producing agent into the tumor, either a virus or an RNA that makes interleukin-12, which is an important immune hormone called a cytokine that causes the immune system to recognize tumor cells as foreign and something the body does not want. And this may cause an immediate reaction against the tumor that could shrink the primary tumor, but it just as likely can cause memory immune cells that will persist after the tumor has been removed surgically and stop the tumor from recurring either in the region of the incision or elsewhere in the body as a metastatic lesion. The hope is that this will benefit the dogs that are currently enrolled in the trial, that they will have an immune response against their tumor that will stop their tumor from becoming a life-threatening problem for them in the future. And that as we understand the mechanisms at play in both success and in failure, that we can translate this to better treatments for dogs with sarcomas, as well as better treatments for people with sarcomas too. It just as likely can cause memory immune cells that will persist after the tumor has been removed surgically and stop the tumor from recurring either in the region of the incision or elsewhere in the body as a metastatic lesion. The hope is that this will benefit the dogs that are currently enrolled in the trial, that they will have an immune response against their tumor that will stop their tumor from becoming a life-threatening problem for them in the future. And that as we understand the mechanisms at play in both success and in failure, that we can translate this to better treatments for dogs with sarcomas, as well as better treatments for people with sarcomas too. This is an example of a study that could really help both ends of the leash as far as the, the humans and the dogs involved and make this potentially deadly cancer more manageable with the immune system's health. The risks of any immunotherapy trial are that the immune response might become too robust and make the patient feel ill because the immune system is very riled up, or that simply the immune response will fail and it will not control the tumor in the way that's hoped. So far in the dogs that we have enrolled in the trial, we have seen very little in the way of side effects, and we have not had any dog that we weren't able to treat with surgically because of the participation in the trial. So its safety appears reasonable, and I hope that its benefits substantially outweigh those risks. In this case, we are looking at soft tissue sarcomas, which could be anything from something referred to as a spindle cell tumor or spindle cell sarcoma to a fibrosarcoma or a nerve sheath tumor. A number of those different names can be applied to this group of tumors. The most important quality of these tumors is that they are intermediate to high grade, so they are more likely to spread through metastasis, which is what we are hoping to prevent with the immunotherapy. They have to be able to be surgically removed with at most a regional resection in order to remove the primary tumor after the immune treatment has been given. For dogs that present to us with an aspiration cytology that su suggests a soft tissue sarcoma, they would be further screened for participation in the trial through a biopsy of the tumor to confirm that it is an intermediate to high-grade tumor, as well as a CT scan to be able to understand the extent of the tumor and can it be removed surgically. If the answer is that it can be removed surgically and is an intermediate to high-grade tumor, and the patient is in otherwise good health with strong kidneys and liver and a good bone marrow, then the patient would receive injections into the tumor of this immune agent, along with biopsies of the tumor before each injection to be able to look at the kinds of cells that are infiltrating the tumor in response to the immune agent being given. And then at either 21 days or 28 days after the treatment of the immune uh, treatment, whether it's the virus or the self-replicating RNA, the patient would undergo surgery and then simply be followed for evidence of recurrence of the tumor after that and not need any further immune therapy as currently planned. The virus that's being injected is a type of virus that's called replication incompetent. So it can be taken into cells and its genetic payload can be manufactured, which in this case is focused specifically on this immune hormone interleukin-12 
But the rest of the viral genome that's necessary for reproduction of the virus has been removed. And so the virus does not make new copies of itself. So it's a very temporary and self-limiting infection of only the local cells into which it was injected. And then when it has made its payload and those cells go on to die, the virus does not continue on in the body. The virus that's being used for this study has been used in many veterinary and human trials in the past and is deemed safe by the FDA and by regulatory agencies. The costs that would be expected of the clients in this case are simply the costs of ensuring that the animal is a suitable candidate for the trial. So if they have basic blood work and they have a biopsy already, there may be minimal costs, maybe a, a consultation exam fee, and that is all for enrolling in the trial. If they need further workup, including biopsies, chest radiographs, or blood work, uh, it could be between $600 and $1,000 of initial workup costs. But once the patient appears eligible, the CT scan prior to the initiation of the clinical trial is covered by the trial. The rest of the cost of immunotherapy is covered by the trial, and the trial gives a $3,500 gift towards the cost of surgery for the surgical removal of the tumor. So it saves the family substantial money while at the same time getting them access to cutting-edge immunotherapy. For this class of tumors, about half of the time that they have surgery to remove these intermediate to high-grade tumors they will not have any recurrence either locally or metastatically distantly later on. Could even be a higher percentage than that. And our hope and expectation is that through immunotherapy, we will reduce that even further. So simply by participating in the trial, the animal is benefited substantially by a high quality surgery conducted in our hospital by a veterinary surgical oncologist who specifically is focused only on surgical treatment of cancer. And then the additional benefit of having received the immunotherapy prior to that surgery that will hopefully reduce further chances of recurrence. <clears throat> the study requires the initial visit and workup and then weekly visits for three to four weeks in preparation for surgery. The surgery itself may be a separate visit depending on the timing. And then we ask that animals come back every three months for follow-up afterwards to evaluate whether there is evidence of recurrence of the tumor either at the surgical site or in metastatic lesions. This is open to dogs that have either initial diagnosis or recurrent soft tissue sarcoma. There's at least four centimeters in diameter and its longest diameter and has the ability to have it surgically removed. If you believe that your dog might qualify for this trial, please have your veterinarian contact us here at MU. They can reach our consult line at 573-882-7821, and the veterinarian will have the information we need to understand whether your dog might qualify for the trial. If it appears that your dog will qualify for the trial, our staff will work with you to establish a convenient appointment for you to bring your dog in to be evaluated, and they will help you understand the schedule of visits and what is expected of you in participating in the trial. So IL-12 is one of the most powerful cytokines. Cytokine is a signal that the immune system makes between cells. People have known for a really long time that IL-12 could be super, super potent in terms of generating anti-cancer immune responses. The problem has been that it's very hard to deliver. So if you just um, give an infusion of IL-12 to a patient, it's just too toxic. They can't get up to the high enough doses in the tumor to generate an anti-tumor immune response. The problem is that if you just inject the IL-12, it's very short-lived. So what we've been trying to do here is use these viruses that produce IL-12. Um, these are not viruses that can be transmitted. Um, these are viruses that affect cells in the tumor where they're injected. And um, they infect those cells and start producing IL-12 in the tumor. So they don't produce it anywhere else, but just in the tumor. And uh, our goal is to see if we can eliminate tumors uh, with this and to create an immune response that can really last. And sometimes people will call it 
uh, quote, in situ vaccination. So you're not giving a vaccine like where you're injected in somebody's arm, but you're killing the tumor in such a way that the immune system is learning to recognize this, you know, it's not really foreign, but it has some foreign, it has some mutated DNA elements that are foreign to the natural body. So uh, the immune system can see this um, tumor and uh, protect against it from coming back. And what we have certainly seen is we've seen huge influxes of immune cells into the tumor, which we're hoping will provide protection against these tumors coming back. Because these are all dogs who are planning to get surgery for their cancer. And um, we're hoping that th by injecting them with this virus, it'll protect the dog from the cancer coming back. Side effects? Yeah. So it's been really well tolerated. It's been really well tolerated. The dogs have not had really any significant side effects um, so far. And we are thinking about ways, you know, because we would like this to be a treatment that really shrinks the tumors too, because there are some dogs that have very large soft tissue sarcomas to the point where it makes surgery very difficult. And our goal has always been that we could induce enough of an immune response that we could really shrink these. And we are still thinking about how to do that. I haven't given up on that. But for these, one of the things that we're learning is um, which immune cells are becoming more prevalent in these tumors. And uh, we're looking for ways that the tumors might be trying to um, push back and evade the immune response. And by doing that, I think I'm hoping we'll be able to come up with combination strategies to help more dogs. And it's important to, you know, we're, we're, tr we're trying to help these dogs, uh, but we're also trying to learn lessons. <clears throat> we're trying to learn lessons that are going to help human patients with sarcoma. Um, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Shea Bracca before uh, from Ohio State. So we're doing this work with uh, Jeff Bryan at, at Missouri, but with Shea Bracca, I've actually been doing a study where we're comparing human soft tissue sarcomas and the dog soft tissue sarcomas, yeah. uh, finding that they're very similar. Uh, and in humans, um, I mean, soft tissue sarcoma is just such a terrible disease, um, really, really tragic, heartbreaking. And if we can... Um, find a way to get these viruses to work in humans as well. Um, I mean, that would, that would be huge. That would be huge. This work is so important because um, it's rightly so there are very high bars to move therapies into a human clinic where their patients are. I mean, there, you know, we, we don't take these therapies lightly in the dog either, but um, we're, a, we're able to be a little bit more creative and move a little quicker when we're developing a dog therapy. For example, if we see that a combination treatment might help things work better, it's relatively straightforward for us to just do it and, um, and, and test the next treatment. Whereas, um, you know, if we wanted to do that in human, it could be a year of, um, we'd have to reshow it in mat mice. And there's just a lot more practical barriers. And some of them have to do with money. It's a lot, it's very expensive to do some of these trials in humans. So if we can show the proof, proof of principle in, um, in some of these dogs that really need help, that would really help accelerate uh, treatments of human cancers as well. Um, it's, it's a virus that, um, it, it's called this Zvex IL-12 uh, virus. Um, it was developed by a Seattle-based company uh, uh, that was called Immune Design. The very interesting thing about this virus, and it was actually, the virus was developed by a, a Nobel Prize winner. Um, it doesn't just infect any cell. It only affects the cells where you inject it that are um, antigen-presenting cells, meaning the cells that tell the immune system where to go. So it affects cells that then um, interact with T cells and uh, hopefully those T cells will be stimulated by the IL-12 uh, those, those cells are producing. Has Zvex been mm -hmm. in a human trial at all? It has, it has. It, uh, I mean, I was very involved uh, with that. It, not producing IL-12, but uh, the same virus 
was producing a um, a um, a protein called NYSO one, which is very important for human sarcomas, um, and and it's been used in hundreds of patients. So uh, we have a lot of data on on the virus. Uh, so it's not you know people hear virus sometimes that makes them uh, worried, uh, but this is a very well tested virus. It's not infectious. It doesn't. Um, uh, spread outside of the exact place that it's been injected. Okay. And, and Zvex is, um, that's the one shot. The multiple shot, is that the mRNA yeah. formulation? Yeah. It's multiple shots, right? So it's a little bit more of a pain. And yeah. we haven't seen that it's, so we've seen great responses so far in terms of the immune cells in the tumor. So we know it's generating a huge immune response, both of them. And we haven't seen anything better from the the RNA one. We've, um, if anything, maybe the ZVEX seems a little bit better. So um, we're trying. I think I think we're tuning our focus in a little bit more on the ZVEX right now. Um, they really, I think, there's a lot of interest in making. Um, they say making cold tumors hot. Uh, um, that means taking a tumor that's not generating a big immune response and make it generate a big immune response. And these vectors definitely do that. They definitely make the tumors hot. One thing that I just want to make sure that people are aware of is how safe these are. Um, you know, the it there are approved, they call them oncolytic viruses in... Um, in human cancer patients, right? Uh, there are vaccines that are, you know, viral vaccines. So, so it's not, um, you know, we're, we're, we're operating within kind of the standard ways that people give treatments and the treatments have uh, been very well tolerated by the dogs that have received the injections. We haven't had any dogs with um, significant side effects from, from, from the injections. I think, you know, right now, what I'm thinking with just the IL-12 alone is my hope is that it prevents these cancers from coming back. You know, my hope is that, you know, next year we've learned enough so that we can take this the next step and we're really shrinking these tumors so that we don't even need surgery anymore. I mean, that would really be great. Like if I had to, you know, my hypothesis, if I had to predict things, um, is that we're injecting these tumors. They get a little bit soft because I think the immune cells in the tumor are killing the tumor. And then that kind of goes away because I think what's happening is there's just a huge immune response into the tumor. There's so many immune cells in the tumor. And some of these cells we see tenfold increases, right? So they're at a very small number before, and then they're hugely represented consistently, like in every dog that we've treated. Um, and my feeling is that, you know, so far we haven't watched the dogs for a long time after the injection, because um, we're trying to, we're not trying to interfere with standard of care, right? We want the dogs to get all of the treatments that they would have gotten if they weren't on this trial, right? So that means surgery. But uh, my feeling is that if we were to just keep giving these injections, like maybe every two weeks for some time, the immune system would overtake the tumor and eliminate it. But, but we don't know that. We don't know that. That's, my, that's what I hypothesize would happen if we did that experiment. Okay.